Hello, viewers. This is Dr. Prakash from I Want Second Opinion. Further to our talk with Dr. Lakshman last in the last episode regarding constipation, uh, we are here to continue with our uh, part two of our constipation talk, where Dr. Lakshman is going to uh, give his uh, insights about the various treatments that are available in constipation. Hi, Dr. Lakshman. Hello, Raj. It's nice to be back. Yeah, fantastic. Lakshman, uh, the other day you gave us a, a fantastic overview of what constipation uh, is and uh, what are the reasons for constipation and what are the things that uh, people can change in their food habits, etc. regarding constipation. Uh, then we touched upon something on the uh, how you will investigate a patient with the constipation. Now, today shall we concentrate on the topic of uh, what are the treatment modalities that are available in treating the constipation, which will be of use to our public? Let's talk about the pharmacological methods of constipation treatment, the non-pharmacological methods of constipation treatment, whether there is any indication for surgery or other, whether there are any home remedies that are available or there are any uh, recent advances uh, in the medical management regarding constipation. Uh, uh, shall we start the topic? And go ahead, Lakshman. Oh, thank you, Raj. I think it's important that uh, we also talk about the treatment, not just uh, about constipation. So yeah. now, uh, regarding the treatment, you know, basically one, uh, the treatment depends on what the underlying disease and what particular person has got, what comorbidities he has got. So, okay. and how severe is the constipation. Yeah. So coming to the basic things, as I mentioned, uh, diet, hydration, yeah. Mm. A lot of fiber in the diet, as well as um, simple activities, aerobic exercises, which will help to prevent constipation. Secondly, sure. coming to the patient, what postures they should adopt during passing um, the bowel movements. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As I mentioned in the last time, squatting is very important position, which will help in. Uh, relieving the obstruction in exit constipation. Okay. So those who are used to Western commodes, they find it mm. difficult to squat again. Mm. So what we do is we uh, we allow them to sit on the Western commode, but keep one foot high stool in front of them so that the legs can be at a higher level. Oh, right. Okay. okay. So in, in the Western commode itself, you change, uh, give some modifications so that they can adapt our Indian methodology of uh, sitting, like squatting methodology. Yeah, okay. It's not an exact modification of the Western commode. It will be there. They can have a, a one foot high stool, which they can keep it in front of that. Okay. Oh, and so that both your hip and the knee are flexed in front of you. Exactly. So. Right. There's a device available, it's called the Squatty Putty. That's available in the market. Where Squatty Potty. Squatty Potty, yeah. Okay. That you right. can keep it in front of the, when you are going to the toilet, you can use mm. it and take it away when you don't need it. Right. Okay. Right. That's a very important tip for our listeners. Okay. Um, taking simple medications for uh, if there's a short-term complication, uh, constipation, we can give some simple medications which are available over the counter or available at home. Uh, yes. You mentioned about uh, taking Senna uh, and uh, in, the old, in the olden practice, our grandmas used to give castor oil, which you don't advise that anymore. Is that right? Correct. And milk of magnesia, which is available easily over the counter. Okay. Even some fiber supplements are available over the counter. Right. Okay. It's called Isapgol, which is a um, husk of one uh, one of the. It's called um, Selium husk. It's a husk, is it? Husk. Yeah. The okay. Advantage of these husks are they uh, imbibe water, they swell up. Mm. So. When you take them okay. at night with a glass of water, you can make it into a juice, drink it. Over time, they swell up and also get mixed with the stools. They swell up and retain water. 
that makes it right. move as well as right. it makes the stool soft which can be so easily pushed right so it's a bulk forming and uh, stool softening kind of a uh, tool exactly it right. also helps in dietics basically because that will reduce the absorption of uh, 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 glucose fast it will slow down okay so there's an additional advantage in dietics right so what is a trade name it is available as in the market is it available in amazon or in the normal pharmacological shops exactly it is very easily available it is available in all the pharmacies it is uh, simply isabel husk uh, can you spell it for us please i s a p h g u l isabel husk okay yeah so right in india it's available as a natural ax uh fibril fibrodiet like that so many okay companies. natural ax fibrodiet fibril right okay that's very useful for our listeners okay so these are all the uh, uh kind of a semi home remedial come pharmacological okay. stuff these are, are there any medications that are available sorry sorry go ahead lakshman i should not these be these are all safe medications that can be tried okay yeah right okay now uh what are, are there any pharmacological medications like tablets or anything that are available in order to uh, relieve constipation there are quite a few ones but before going to the tablets you should consult a uh, physician or a gastroenterologist so who can advise regarding the reason for the constipation and then treat accordingly so, okay um we have got um, uh, laxatives which can mm. be bulk laxatives as i mentioned more of fibers in the diet okay and it can be uh, osmotic laxatives mm that is commonly used which we so have. bulk laxatives are the one which makes your stools uh, much bulkier whereas the osmotic ones are the one which absorb water uh, and form a kind of a semi solid kind of a stool am i right in saying so yeah Uh, osmotic uh, laxatives they take more water and hence they eat in the water in the bowel lumen which is right. for flushing it right otherwise okay. they get absorbed from the gut and go into the urine so that doesn't help much so right the osmotic uh, laxatives uh, are commonly used like lactulose magnesium sulfate and uh, uh, the polyethylene glycol ones or the muicol or what are they give for the bowel preparations in a okay. smaller dosage will be working as laxatives okay right okay so these are all osmotic uh, uh, laxatives yeah so when you take osmotic laxatives you need to drink a lot of water otherwise mm. you get dehydrated exactly right okay so ra- uh, no, uh, rather than a normal intake of water you need to sli- take on a slightly higher uh, a uh, cups of water correct okay good and um these are the simple medications what to use but okay again this can be like adjuvants to any other medications for example if the patient needs something for thyroid we give the hormone replacement in addition you can use these things right so treat the underlying it. organic pathology like low thyroid or if the patient suffers from parkinsonism treat the cause of parkinsonism okay so the other common cause for constipation is drug induced as i mentioned mm. there are so many people taking codeine and morphine for some or other pain mm. they uh, these narcotic analgesics what they are called they mm. are addictive as well as mm. they can affect the bowel movements they cause constipation so right uh, when we prescribe codeine we always also prescribe some laxatives right okay okay but if the patient needs morphine for obvious reasons so mm. it should be supported with some medications so right morphine has got effect on the pain relief as well as on the bowels mm. there are some mm. drugs which can block the effects on the bowels right it's called naloxagon mm. that can be prescribed along with morphine or codeine that will reduce its effect on the bowels 
So right. Is it on okay. constipation will be better. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So these are all the pop. Yeah. There are some more medications like, uh, as I mentioned, for slow transit constipation, we we need to improve the bowel movements, mm. colonic movements. There okay. is something called procaloparide. Okay. Which helps in movements of the large bowels. Right. So we are trying to. So initially you talked about bulk, uh, making the stool bulkier. Next you talked about osmotic laxatives, wherein. Uh, the water gets absorbed and retained in the intestine itself in order to make it much more smoother. And now you're talking about pushing the horse, which is essentially making the intestine moving a little bit uh, f- uh, faster rather than being sluggish. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. So what is that? What is there in this particular category? Prickleprint. Earlier we used to get some. Cisapride, mosapride, and now it's the prickleopride. Cisapride okay. is a very good drug, but it is banned because of its effect on the heart, cardiac arrhythmias. Okay. So now we have got prickleopride, uh, which is fairly safe. Only thing is, it can cause a headache as a one of the common side effects. So okay. we warn the patient that it can cause headache. If it's too severe, then to avoid it, stop it. Otherwise, okay. they will get used to the headache part very soon after a few days, then they can continue. All right. Okay. For all our viewers and listeners, please do not self-medicate. Uh, uh, whenever you got constipation, as Dr. Lakshman told us, uh, do, uh, except for the home remedial measures and uh, uh, the earlier trials of the Senna and stuff like that, if the constipation is persisting, do kindly consult your treating physician before embarking upon taking any medications. That's correct. So there okay. are a lot more uh, medications which are being studied, researched, and some are all available in Some more okay. medications are there. And the stool softeners are there, like Tarkisit. Okay. And uh, other medications. We'll talk about the enemas which can be right. given. Yes, please. So, so as I mentioned, there's a, if there's exit constipation, we need to empty it. So for that, we advise the posture. Okay. Which is a very important. And mm. secondly, we can give some enemas if there's a local problem. So right. if there's a lot of stools accumulating in the distal large bowel, that's in the sigma colon or in the rectum, we mm. can give enemas Enemas are medications which are given per, through the back passage right. to a small tube, which is okay. actually a plastic bag. So the medication right. in the plastic bag, when squeezed, they mm. enter into the rectum. So that can be done at home easily. Okay. And the person can lie down and apply it. And so the medications go into the rectum, wait for 10, 15 minutes or as long as possible. Mm so that it will reach the sigma and it will start working. You'll have an extreme urge to pass emotions, then go to mm. the toilet and mm. it will empty. Okay, right, okay. Usually we have got phosphate enemas. We also have got glycerin enemas, which can be helpful for hard stools. Okay, right, okay. So if these they... enemas, the patient can try on their own and they don't need to have any external uh, help or anything at all. Yeah, I, when the if their hands are good, for example, if they have got rheumatoid arthritis, when the finger movements are difficult, or very elderly patients, they may need some support. Otherwise, we can do it ourselves. Right. Okay. And how uh, frequent uh, will the patient with chronic constipation need these enemas? Is it like once in a week, once in a month? How often do you uh, advise them? The intention of this medication is to make the bowels open at least three times a week. So right. if the person doesn't open the bowels one day, at least second day, he should take the enema. Right. Okay. Right. So is it a painful thing. process, uh, Lakshman? No, enema is not a painful process at all. It's like giving some liquid into the back passage, which is uh, the colon is it will accept the medications without any right. 
extra stretch, it can easily accommodate that. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks for uh, explaining uh, about this uh, uh, enema uh, in chronic constipation. Now, uh, are there any uh, surgical interventions that are available, uh, which is an extreme measure, or am I missing any other intermittent? There are a couple uh, of more things we are up our sleeve to try okay. out. Wow. So, uh, we've got bowel wash, colonic wash, with the help of okay. bowel irrigation. It's mm. called peristine system, where it can give a more forceful fluid, which can go all the way into the colon and empty, not just in the rectum. Okay. So, that what is the difference between the enema and this stuff? Enema will be chemical which will reach only up to the rectum or a little bit of sigmoid. But peristine okay. can reach further up because of oh, the, it goes all the way to the large intestine. More powerful one, yeah. Right. Okay. Right. And okay. More important is some patients who have difficulty to understand the sphincter pressures will be different. They will not mm. have the arch, and they don't know how to stimulate. There will be no arch. So mm. we have got uh, uh, something called biofeedback. And okay. CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Oh, okay, okay. So like when, kind of a counseling cognitive behavior therapy. Okay. Yeah, it's not uh, just counseling. It's something more than that. They've got balloons which can be kept in the rectum and distended, so that will give a stimulus like the natural urge. Then, once this urge, how to defecate? That training can be given. So. Or so you mean to say that people tend to forget about the natural process of defecation and we are trying to teach them or uh, reteach them as to how this is done. Correct. So they will be made to understand what is urge and how to react to it. Right. Okay. Does this happen in normal people or people uh, who are... Uh, uh, getting into Alzheimer's mode or dement no. uh, dementia or anything it can at all. It happen in normal people. If it's prolonged and requires a subsequent, sufficient help, then we can yeah. do this CBT. Right. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's definitely uh, uh, useful for us to know, actually, La Lakshman. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for that. Okay. So, any other uh, treatment modalities, uh, Lakshman? So other than this, I think uh, we have exhausted all the medications. Still, there's no improvement. Patient has got significant abdominal pain, not responding to any of these methods. Then there are, we have to have the last resort, the surgical. There are two types of surgeries. One is uh, in a patient with diverticular disease, constipation, six years, which are related to diverticulum. Okay. Which is, again, due to constipation. Mm. So they find it difficult to empty the bowels. With the diverticular right. stricture, if it's confined to the sigmoid colon, sigmoid colectomy, and then into anastomosis, that helps in improving the bowels. So um, essentially, whichever part of the lower intestine is significantly affected, you, the, uh, uh, the advice would be as an extreme measure to resect that particular part of the large intestine and suture the, the proximal and the distal part together to take away the affected part of the intestine. Yeah. It is usually happens in the sigmoid because that is the one which is bending. Okay. Right. Okay. So that is a sigmoid. Um, sir, All right. Yeah. Sometimes the whole colon is not moving. There will be mm. constipation and um, it is extreme and not, nothing else uh, helps causing okay. lot more complications. Then we end up doing a colostomy. Colostomy means? Uh, removal of the a, whole of the colon. Removal of the whole of the colon. All right. Okay. That, or even if you retain it, the cutting the small bowl at the end and connecting it to the abdominal wall and put a bag around it to work as a right. rectum. Right. Okay. Okay. So how 
rare are these procedures done on patients with chronic constipation uh, or they are there are specific indications for these kind of uh, extremely rare procedures i guess yeah uh, one is uh, if it's a nerve damage to the whole of the colon where there is no motility at all okay or if there's a mega colon which is huge colon mm. which is due to nerve damage uh, which is from birth like uh, hirschsprung's disease hirschsprung's disease is right okay. yeah yeah then okay right. and people with multiple structures in the colon right do not okay. respond again so there are very small indications for that and these are all the extreme procedures that are uh, uh, available yeah yeah fantastic okay yeah uh, in, uh, in uh, to conclude uh, one last question uh, lakshman uh, apart from all the surgical uh, uh, procedures and the medications that you have talked about are there any recent advancements or any emerging treatments in the field of gastroenterology that may benefit the individuals who suffer and struggle from chronic constipation so constipation as uh, the researches are always going on many study trials are there newer okay. medications are on the market there in the research field they are coming out so like the uh, naloxagol prickler pride and linaclotide these are the ones which have come recently and they are working more on the uh hydro ht receptors for ht receptors which can cause okay. this fantastic so, and newer uh, methods uh, for investigations like mr proctogram what exactly is the problem they can analyze with that right okay so it is not doom and gloom for patient with chronic constipation definitely help is available uh, whenever you suffer from constipation after uh, a few days if it is still bothersome for you do not self medicate yourself uh, don't let it go just by itself kindly seek uh, help from the available gastroenterologist and uh, there is a, there is a lot of help available lakshman uh, thanks for all those uh, uh, words of wisdom that you have uh, passed on to us i'm sure our uh, uh, viewers who have listened this would definitely benefit and thank you for all the information that you have passed much appreciated lakshman thanks and i hope it helps the people for listening absolutely lakshman thanks a lot we will see you in the next episode of one of the uh, one of the very common gastroenterology topics until then see you bye 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 bye